this might be the wildest thing that we've ever done. Tent camping in the Arctic Circle. What is he barking at? How do we know if it's a polar bear? Today, we are getting on a plane to go to Longyearbyen, the northernmost city in the world. I have always wanted to go here and I've been putting it off and putting it off, coming up with excuses because it's not exactly convenient to get to this place as you've seen over these past handful of episodes. Over the past 19 days we've traveled 2,625 miles all the way across Europe by train, bus and boat to make it to this moment right here. Honestly it doesn't feel real yet. Right now, this feels like right when you wake up on Christmas morning, but before you open the presents. We are approaching uh, Svalbard and uh, Longyearbyen, so we will come one last time through the cabin to collect the collar. We're planning ways. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've landed on another planet. Holy cow. How do you feel? I don't think I've been anywhere like this before. I don't know. I don't think there is anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and what we forgot to mention is that every single hotel, hostel, and Airbnb on the entire island was full. So we booked four nights at this probably totally polar bear free campsite that has its own electric fence and guard dogs. I should probably put on like two extra layers of pants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think we just walked down this little path right here. Seriously? And then, I guess, Wait. they have an electric fence, but they have like a way to get in it. And then we're gonna stay in one of those tents out there. It was a little bit refreshing when we first got off the airplane, but now the wind chill is, woo, I hope that tent is sturdy. So all of this right here is the electric fence that they put around the entire camp just to keep the, you know, people in tents safe. And I think this is where we get it. This might be the wildest thing that we've ever done. Tent camping in the Arctic Circle. This is such a great space and kitchen. It's warm, it's beautiful. I love this campground. I love that even though it's freezing, they have a space for everybody to just hang out, cook, cuddle on a couch. Charger electronics, watch the doggos. That's that's just a club that I need to be a part of. Two sleeping bags and some liners. Here we go. Inside our home for the next four nights. This tent is very, very orange and it's making my eyes kind of... These tents were once used as a part of an Antarctica expedition. And they said, so basically, you'll be okay. Josh just sealed us in. I think so. I'm still not sure how any of this stuff works yet. This is actually what it is like in here. You guys have seen this bag before, right? It's usually bright blue. We've got some luxurious self-inflating sleeping pads. Supposedly very warm sleeping bags with liners in them. We've got a rock on the on in the corner. We rented all of this for like $80 a night. $80 a night. Do you remember that scene in Wizard of Oz where she like goes from like the black and white world into Oz and it turns to color? Just watch this. Working on that shot. We'll, we'll get it eventually. <laughs> Lisa will come out without going like this. <laughs> this is like a big tube. Well, he likes you. To the okay, so we're gonna show you all this campsite as soon as we get back, but we gotta make it to the grocery store before it closes, which is in town about mm, two miles away. Okay, so on the website, it specifically states that this road is reasonably safe from polar bears, which is just the right amount of safe that you wanna be from polar bears. That's all I can think about as we're walking. Look at how beautiful it is. That's 
this is way, way cooler than I thought it would be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't have the right words for how I feel right now, but this is amazing. Just, just look. We're surrounded by mountains and blue, blue water, but the ice cold blue water. And I just saw a beluga squirrel. Oh. I just saw that way. I see them. We gotta get closer. There were like three beluga whales just over there. They might still be there, but they were spouting, playing around. You can see them come out of the water a little bit. This place is magical already. I've never been any place like this before. Just a casual waterfall on the side of the road. This place is so remote, so desolate, but there's no birds. There's no anything out here. There's no plants, no trees, nothing. Except for those birds. What? Except for those birds. <laughs> there are those birds. Hey, we're seeing lots more cars and signs of life. I think we're close to town. <laughs> So we're here during a time where it should be theoretically sunny all day. It's midnight sun. Wait, are you cinematic moding me out of the picture? <laughs> we're... Now you can see. <laughs> so we're, I can change that in post editing. So we're here at a time where it's supposed to be midnight sun, where it's gonna be sunny all the time. And I know right now it doesn't really look that way, yeah. but I can't imagine what it's like to live here during polar nights where it's just nighttime all the time. Just one really big store up here and it's called the Svalbard store. And it seems to have like kind of everything you need. It's got clothing, it's got food, it's got like a coop up here for groceries, it's got alcohol. I guess what else do you really need up here? Warm clothes, it's got that too. The thing I'm really surprised about is the prices are not only like not outrageous, which I was honestly expecting them to be. This is the cheapest place in all of Norway that we've been to buy them. All right, just a, just a short one hour walk back. No problem. It's a reindeer. Christmas is real. Santa is real. <laughs> it's the only logical conclusion. Okay, knock on wood, but a very polar bear free experience so far. We're like halfway there, I think. There's a sign with mm -hmm. a polar bear on it. Polar bear crossing. It's so quiet out here. Unnerving a bit. But then Long Even came to life and showed us something really incredible. Oh my gosh. They're coming out. Oh, they're moving. There's just a whole family of them out there. Oh, home sweet home. We made it. God, it's windy and cold. Here's to making it to the northern last city in the world. And hopefully a successful night of camping. Mm -hmm. We have to be quiet now because it's 10 p.m. No, it's not 10 p.m. It's 10 p.m. No, it's not. <laughs> what? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good night. You snooze, you lose, right? What's that sound? That's a dog. What is he barking at? <laughs> How do we know if it's a polar bear?
Should we go outside and look? This is what two in the morning looks like, by the way. Luckily, there were no polar bears in sight. Totally freaked out, we tried to get back to sleep. Oh, yep. It's hard to describe what sleeping in this tent is like. I mean, sometimes you'll hear the dogs barking. You're like, is that a polar bear? And then you hear the wind blowing the tent. And it sometimes just rubs up against you. You're like, ooh, that's cold and creepy. And sometimes you hear the rain, which is really, really nice. What an experience. And I also can't forget that our tent is our fridge. So everything in here currently smells like pesto, pasta, salami, and lunch meat. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to go eat breakfast. Good morning. We're about to go walk the tacos. Come here, come here, Spooner. Okay. Are you excited? How's it going? Walking a. Uh... Walking an Arctic sled dog. They are the so the most city in the world. <laughs> oh my it's god. A good day. Or they're walking us. They're walking they're us. Walking they're so us. excited. We don't barely have to move. They'd be good on hikes. They would motivate us so much. <laughs> Look at this. This waist belt that we've got. Heavy gear. Whoa. He's so strong. He's so strong. He could easily pull me. Your favorite activity on longer been so far. This is definitely the coolest <laughs> dog walking experience I've ever had in my life. Today we're heading into town on these bicycles right here, the creaky old thing that I'm on right now. I think this will be better than walking an hour. Waterfall. One of the coolest things we learned yesterday is just how important coal is to Svalbard. In fact, all these towers that you're seeing right behind me, those aren't power lines. Those are how they used to transport the coal by cable all the way from where they were digging it out or blasting it out down to the port to be able to transport it elsewhere. It's some amazing stuff. It's super old and I think some of it still works, but it's not being used anymore. We wanted to learn more about this incredible place, so off to the Svalbard Museum we went. Seems like so there are shoe covers, but most people are just walking around with socks, which is not all about not wearing shoes. The museum is fascinating in so many ways. It turns out that this entire island is actually part of Norway, but also kind of not. Okay, so I think I just figured out why we had to get our passports checked yesterday on the way in here. It's not part of the Schengen area like the rest of Norway and most of Europe. You actually have to go through passport control on the way here no matter where you're coming from. I had no idea. It's also home to the legendary Global Seed Vault, the world's backup location for over a million seeds from all over the world. This place is, in so many ways, the only of its kind. If everything falls apart, this place will make sure that we can grow food and bring our planet back to life. After leaving the museum, we decided to find out exactly how big Longyearbyen is by walking to the furthest point you can legally go. So as we're getting closer here to the edges of town, we're noticing that almost all the businesses are like Arctic expedition services, which makes sense because it's literally illegal to go outside of the city limits, as in the limits of this area and down by the airport and the road that connects them without having a guide with you or someone carrying a rifle at all times. And that's because of polar bears. But unfortunately, all those guided tours are between $400 and $800 per person, which is not what we were expecting. But we're just gonna walk as far as we can until we reach those signs that tell you that there are polar bears past there and you're not allowed to go any further. We are walking still within the settlement bounds. There are like houses and we just passed a school but it definitely feels like we're in a very, very now 
ultra remote part of Longerton. There's just like a glacier and the weather has gotten a little bit more extreme. Like it feels like we shouldn't keep going, but you wanna see what's at the end of the road. So this is it. I don't know why, but in my imagination, I just kind of expected that right past this sign, there'd be like 40 polar bears just waiting <laughs> hungrily for tourists like us. I was reading that there are apparently 3,000 polar bear here on Svalbard, which is almost as many residents here. It's wild. All right, time to head back. We left these bikes here unlocked up for about four hours. It's still here. I love this place. Sorry about the sound again. Whoa. A nice local with a car saw us struggling to make it in the wind on our bikes and saved us by offering us a ride. We accepted it. Thank you. <laughs> so we're here at Svalbard Brewery, which is the northernmost brewery in the entire world. That won't get tiring to say at all. There's so many northernmost things to do here. <laughs> this place is so cool and cozy. Yeah, we're gonna have some beers and it's a good price. Cheers to camping in the Arctic Circle and feeling very, very comfortable doing so. <laughs> Cheers. Somehow they make this brewery work and that constantly amazes me. Like, the boats can only really come in and out of here to take their beer and materials to make the beer from here all the way back to the mainland for like one or two months per year. And the rest of the time there's too much ice and they can't get anything in or out so they can't sell any beer. It's just something special about it being so far north. Truly my favorite part feels like a party. <laughs> Today's the first day that we've had that it's really clear. Really no cloud coverage. You can actually see everything. Sun's out. It's perfect. It's perfect. This place is just astoundingly beautiful on days like this and then a little bit terrifying on days when you can't see anything and it's super dark. Josh is about to do his Arctic naked circle squint. Arctic circle naked swim. I'm here for moral support. best perk that you get after joining the Arctic Naked Bathing Club is you get a free hot shower. Yeah. That shower just changed my life. Probably the thing I've been most proud of, maybe in my life. It's 9.15. That's the sun still up. So after thinking about this all day, I think I finally found the words to describe how I'm feeling today. You know, when I first heard about this, my friend Ryan told me, he was like, hey, did you know the northernmost city in the world is Long Urbian and you can like go up there and it's super cool and it's a totally different place you can get to and just that was inherently interesting. I'm still a little questioning as to why, right? Like it's, it's a pretty outlandish quest, right? Like could have very easily just booked a flight to Long Urbian and it could have been here like two days later or one day later. Right, and it would have been super easy to do. I would have missed all of the stuff that we did, all the amazing sauna experiences, all the train rides, all of just like the slowly getting closer and closer and closer. But I think really what this whole thing was about was just about me keeping a promise to myself. Coming here in a way is one of the first promises that younger me made, that older me actually followed through on. For a 
first, head first. Perfect day, this is the perfect way for us to end our trip here. This is our last day here. We joined the most prestigious club that I've ever joined in my entire life, the Arctic <laughs> Naked Bathing Club. Yeah, you don't even need clothes for this club. No, no, nothing you fancy. You as you are, no shoes. It's the anti-fancy club. It's, it's everything I wanted it to be. Tomorrow, we head out and we have to start flying because we got to make it to officiate our friend's wedding. We don't have that much time to get there, but it Let's should be enough. Let's cross our fingers that all our flights yeah. and connections just go smoothly. Dude. See you tomorrow. That was definitely the coldest night. Thank you, sleeping bag. Out the birthing canal. <laughs> we made it. We did it. To the northernmost city in the world. God, it's cold. Everybody, oh, I'm gonna miss you. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, I'm good. I'm not ready to leave here yet. There's something about quests, quests and journeys like this that just make the trip that much more special. Right out where we came in. Usually this trip almost didn't happen. Yeah. Like yeah, we, we were, almost gave up day one. We arrived in Paris and we were like, we can't afford this. We can't do this. Everything's falling it's apart. It's impossible to make it. It was impossible <laughs> to make it day one. We were in over our heads. Well, I'm so glad that we kept going. But as always, the quest provides we adapt, we keep moving, and we make it to a place like this, the northernmost city in the world. We swam in there yesterday, in there. Longer been so cool, we gotta come back. We gotta come back. Thank you. It was delayed by a little bit. We still gotta go fast. We're just waiting for Lisa to get off the plane. What is that? That's my wife. You look great. Do I look official? Yeah. Do I look ready? Go. Are they leaving? Okay, bye. Okay, 30 seconds is off, thank you very much. <laughs> How'd it go? I got it very well, super well.